everybody, welcome back. Um, hi, whoops. I'm asking the questions today. Hmm. And uh, did you say hello? Hello. 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 Um, we have a question here. Somebody who is has an incoming Shetland Sheepdog puppy. Come in hot. Coming. Incoming, incoming. And um, they also have a six-year-old and a four-year-old. Dogs or children? It doesn't say, but children. They, they sure. know it's going to be, be sure intensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they say it's going to be probably is already intensive with uh -huh. their children. I mean, the dogs are pretty easy, and so they want to um, know what are the best games to play. That's a good question for kids and dogs, I guess. Um, well, let's just start off with the dog because um, I guess you know the adult should be teaching the dog the games first, and then teaching the children how to play. So, what, what would be good games? Well, if you have an incoming puppy, I would start with really simple games, such as, um, you know, it's kind of like with Susan Garrett's crate games. In the crate, out of the crate, in the crate, out of the crate. Oh, mm -hmm. crate door's closed. Crate door's open. Mm -hmm. um, also, teaching them to love dashing into their crate. And then, um, what's the word? Impulse control upon leaving the crate, so that it's not just bursting out of the crate, um, which is particularly handy if you ever travel and do use your crate in your car, mm -hmm. which I highly recommend because you need some kind of restraint for animals in the car, whether it be a crate or a seatbelt. Like you've taught Zuzu to do. I've never seen a dog run into a crate quicker. Mm -hmm. You can say it from down here, Zuzu in your crate. <laughs> She's gone and she's upstairs and so they're great. They're learning, isn't that useful? Yes. They're learning to target it. Yeah. You know? And if you right. do it as a game, not just when you're going to put them away and leave them alone, it lessens the um, intensity and what's... Uh, oh, that's where he's going. Mm. You mean if you're leaving the dogs on their own? Yeah, well, if you're, if you're practicing yeah. this when you're not leaving them alone, you well, know... Well, like it, the crate's a nice place to go now. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, does, it takes off some of the weight of, oh, I'm going to my crate. Right, it's, it's not prison. It's game. part of crate games. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is that does. I mean, you know, I've always taught my dogs to go into the crate willingly and, and definitely the restraint, you know, the uh, boundary control. Don't just leave your crate. But, mm -hmm. but Susan Garrett has taken it up a notch with her crate games and made it super mm -hmm. exciting, fun to go in the crate and to target the crate from anywhere. And um, easy, easy games you can find online. And I would highly recommend that. All right. In and out of the crate. I guess if people. Um, don't want to use a crate, they, you can do the same with the dog's bed. Go to your bed, Absolutely. and then you give the dog a big reward on the bed, and then slow release, back to normal. Or your long-term, and the, or yeah. long-term confinement area. If you're getting a new puppy, you need some form of crate. confinement. Right, yeah. I mean, right, if you want to house train the, the puppy, yes. we need somewhere that they are going to be confined. So, mm -hmm. so another game that might be... You know, that goes into the Kong stuffing and stuff too, right? So that you can do it mm -hmm. Another game, what would be another good Well, game? since we're going to talk about if they're getting a new puppy, they'll be stuck in Kongs. Uh -huh. So another great game would be... Uh, or Squirrel Dudes. Often take it, or Squirrel Dudes, <laughs> or Many footballs, other. or biscuit balls, or whatever or you want. sterilized bones mm -hmm. filled with goodies. There's Any of good hollow chew toy here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leave the dog there. What about interactive but games? He's, he's, well, I was in the middle he's, of saying, he's, he's, oh, he's, what about interactive games? games? Since they're doing Kongs me. and stuff, <laughs> uh, Often take it would be a fun game, or... To more gamify it, turn it into tug. Yes, uh, gamify. You know, like Kong on a rope or. Let's monetize and gamify. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. With uh, right, Jane McGonagall gamifying. Um, but right, so. And what sort of Another. rules could they teach if we're playing tug with a chew toy on a string or a tug toy? What rules are the dogs going to learn which are useful? Well, tug can obviously be a very exciting and uh, energizing game, so it's important to have rules that keep it under control. So rules such as never touching your hand without being, you know, requested. So touching the hand during a game of tug will end the game of tug. Um, it's a big punishment. Uh huh. But there's the ability to get back in there after a few minutes. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be the last game of tug ever. <laughs> it's not. It's not an end never all. Never tug again. So yes, impulse never control. Tug in never this take town it again. without being asked yeah. to take it. Release immediately when when asked to release, of course these are things you teach them, um, never to touch human skin, mm -hmm. and in some cases, even to even in, just to enjoy the tongue toy. Mm -hmm. You know, um, big secret here, big, big clue, uh, if you want your dog to chase something or, um, and grab it and go after it, you've got to move it away from them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't put it in their face. Right. And don't sit there with it like a dead fish. 
um, you know, make it interactive, make it run away like the bunny, and make it an exciting game. Mm -hmm. I guess the, the other thing they learn as well is to take something on the cue. Yep. So if you choose an object the dog likes, so maybe they don't like taking the tuck toy, so we can do off take it with food, mm -hmm. or off take it with a stuffed chew toy. So then when we give them the tuck toy and we say take it, they know what we mean. Mm -hmm. Now, some dogs will naturally take to the tuck toy, others won't, and they look at it. Or like when you right. throw a frisbee, or remember Phoenix, we used to throw the frisbee and she'd go, wow, look at that, it's dead. Mm -hmm. And we had to walk out and get it. Mm -hmm. Which is why sometimes toy on a string is a much toy better idea string. for certain types of really breeds. Really good idea. Who um, allows you to um, obviously keep it alive, but also reel it in as necessary right. if they run, want to run off with it. You don't it. want to have to walk 40 yards that way because... <laughs> or if they have it in their mouth and they want to play chase and run away versus mm -hmm. come back and Even catch. better is toy on a fishing pole. So I had to do with mm -hmm. Phoenix to teach her to retrieve. I had a call and sent it out and kept it moving like this. Mm -hmm. And when she grabbed it, it was like pulling her in like a dead sea What do you need, like a 20 know? pound test line or something for <laughs> yeah, a melody? Pretty, pretty strong line, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And let's see, other games, um, scent games. Use your nose, give your dog the gift of sniff. This is a big one I feel pretty pretty passionate about. Um, they, you know, dogs know how to, how to use their noses. Let's teach them how to identify certain scents that we'd like them to identify and then find them. Um, it's a great game because you can do this inside, in the rain, in the cold weather. Um, you can do it anywhere, really. Mm -hmm. You're teaching them to find something on cue. Um, by air scenting and uh, lots of information on scent games again on online on YouTube um, and at um, Dogwise and how to, how to mm -hmm. teach that. When we, this obviously in this episode we can't go over all those things, right. but it, it uses their brains and lets them get out some of their inherent doggy dogginess in an appropriate venue so that um, you're keeping them extremely busy, but in a relatively um, Calm and calm way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about then, say, scent, scent games 101 and then great applications of it. So, what would be the easiest thing for a dog to look for so they learn the game? Well, their toy. The toy? Uh, what else? Food. Food? food. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. Well, Easy to lure them like... to. A friend of mine up in Canada, who I shall be seeing um, next week, she had three Dobermans, and every Sunday she'd cook little pancakes, and the three Dobermans would sit in the kitchen watching it. Then she hit them all over the house, like, you know, 40, 50 pancakes. And she'd say, pancakes! And the dogs ran and searched. And, oh, it was so much There's fun. nothing like doing that with multiple dogs, yeah. too, because then the race really it's is It's a competition. It's a competition. Yeah. Um, if you don't want that level of, of, of craziness. craziness in your or home, you can't do pancake crumbs everywhere. You could do that one-on-one. -on -one. I often let my dog, and, or if you need someone to win. Sometimes, usually, there's a, a dog that's better at it than others. Remember with Claude, he would never... If we did um, group hides, he would never find it. Unless we First used lettuce. lettuce. Yeah. Remember, he was the best lettuce. Well, because nobody else was looking for lettuce. Uh -huh. yeah. else but they wanted. do now. Isn't it the weirdest yeah. thing? Like, when I eat lettuce now, Hugo and Doom, who's only going to spit it out, they go crazy. Yeah. And this was just because Claude, his one interest in life, was looking for lettuce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One yeah. interest. So once we've got, we've taught the dog to search. So he's learned the word find it, or what have you. What, what other useful things could we have the dog look for? Well, we could teach him to find anything that you, you know, but that's a whole other. Well, I mean, we teach him to you find things people. that we lose. So, right we, one of the games we do in puppy class is go to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? You want to talk about go to, you know? Oh, right. We've actually got a four year old and a six year old running around. Mm -hmm. So, teaching the dog um, everybody's name, basically, and doing round robin recall type things at first, and then doing your. Um, restrained recall, so I'm holding the dog and I say, Dune, who's not going to do this at all, go to Ian, at which point Ian and calls calls excitedly with some, come on, do it. I don't want him to get up, he's sleeping he's nicely. Do do I would then say, Rover, come here, to do it with yeah. Rover now, and bum 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 bum. And so the dog learns, aha, whenever anyone says go to this person's name, they speak and call me. That's very useful, I think. And then you can knowing. increase Names the distance, just like you can with the crate game. It's, you know, first mm -hmm. the crate is right there in front of you, then it's maybe a few feet away, then it's across the room, maybe at a right angle. Next time it's out That's, of the doorway, out of sight. Yeah, just like we walk Zuzu, like Kelly and I walk together apart, probably about 150 yards apart. 
and Susu is zigzagging back and forth between us. And is this she, to get her more exercise? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. yeah. It's also because somebody is faster than somebody else. And, <laughs> and I come back exhausted, having only gone a couple of miles, and Susu's probably covered 20, and she still wants to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. But that's cool. And you can do it in the house too, right? On a rainy day. Absolutely. Spread out around the house and mm -hmm. do the round robin recalls. Kind of hide and seek the kids then is what it kind of becomes. Oh, and that is a fun game. Or we could combine it with the take it off and say, take it, run this to the other room. Yeah. Oh, take this to Johnny. Uh -huh. But think how valuable hide and seek with children is. You know, let's say we're camping and uh, in the middle of nowhere and we lose little Jamie. Mm -hmm. Um, you just got to say to the dog, if the dog understood the words, find Jamie, ain't no problem for the dog. No, because the dog already sniff, can sniff. probably spell Jamie, he yeah. just doesn't realize Jamie's lost and then you're mm -hmm. supposed to be He's looking probably glad him. that Jamie's lost. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost the kid at last. The <laughs> last thing I want to do is find <laughs> Jamie. Yeah, but that's, that's very So it's not te teaching them to use their nose, um, find something that we want, but find it on cue, and then the, uh, the final part of that is to tell us that they've well, even in this house, when you came back the other day, you had lost me. You know, I was way down the bottom of the garden, pruning, and I, I heard someone saying, Ian, 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 and I was shouting, you know, but you could have just said, find Ian, and then the dogs would have sniffed me out. Yeah. I mean, and really, any, maybe not with the four-year-old and six-year-old, but in a couple of years as they get older and actually capable of training, any activity, any training activity you want to do with the dog, you could turn into a competition and a game to see, like, you know, which family member can get the dog to go through the sit down, sit, stand down, stand the quickest, mm -hmm. to do it verbally the quickest, mm -hmm. to uh, do a following course the quickest. Um, and I think it would probably be a lot of fun for uh, siblings to compete with that. Absolutely. And, it's, uh, it's a really good point. And, uh, you know, we're talking about games, and here we are coming up with, you know, alternative games. But really, if you just talked about your training, any training exercise could be and should be, should be. a game. Mm -hmm. And uh, for two reasons, well, maybe more than two, or maybe just one, I'm just getting ahead of myself. Or well, maybe five reasons. <laughs> maybe, let me give you maybe, five reasons. <laughs> mainly because when people, I'm saying with tricks, tricks and games um, make people smile. Yeah. They relax your expectation as a human being, and you get to relax and watch your dog and have fun in your training. Whereas a lot of people have such a serious connotation to tr formal training, mm -hmm. but their, their whole demeanor changes. So when you're teaching your dog to roll over, I see, you see this in, in puppy class all the time, everyone's smiling and their body language is soft and cute and wiggly and animated to get the, the puppy to roll over. And then you ask them to have, teach their puppy to lie down, and they, you know, they go yeah. rod yeah. straight and their faces change and yeah. their tone changes, so that's training. and it's not fun anymore, and, right. we have, and you know, there's no reason. I, I remember in puppy class many years ago, this man who was trying to get his dog to lay down, and he was doing the usual, you know, down, down, gruff foot, down, down, and I said to his daughter, I said, why don't you have a go, and she comes up to the dog and goes, bang, <laughs> the dog goes down like this, and I thought, you know, and, and if we just had the same attitude and said, we can say down in a tough voice if we are a man, rub it down, <laughs> when he does it. And, mm -hmm. and give the dog, you know, the feedback he, he should have got. Be playful in your, so. in your, in your explanation and, and, and luring and coaxing and, and rewarding. Mm -hmm. You can still, your cue can be a uh, serious, fake or real, real serious as you want it to be. Yeah. But, so all training is a trick or uh, a game if, if done properly. So mm -hmm. following is beautiful. The recalls, just what we're doing with the round robin, ends up really being all sort of. So, what are the what are the advantages of games? I mean, we we look on games, and a lot of people think, oh, that's a game, it's silly. I mean, what does it give us? Mm -hmm. Quantifiable results, <laughs> says the mathematician. Right, entertainment, motivation, excitement, better reliability, better performance, and lots of mental exercise, and you end up with a happy trained dog. Yeah. Absolutely, that's cool. So I would say oh, that's, that's cool enough we to are, stop right yeah. there. Yeah. This was such a fun game that we went over How cool are we? Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing with my iPhone? Are you texting on my iPhone? <laughs> Alright, well thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.